Well, this is from the second quarter of the draw. And as you can see right at the bottom there, the match we are about to watch. If you're wondering why uh, Feng and Huang have not played the number five seeds, uh, though they're in the top half of the draw, it's because they won in the German Open on Sunday and therefore they're given reprieve to play their first round match on Wednesday because we have first round matches both on Tuesday and Wednesday. So all finalists. It Let's hear it for the players in the mixed doubles week. from Japan. Oh, Kiyohei Yamashita and Naru Shinoye. A day later. And their opponents from England, Marcus Ellis and Lauren Smith. So Marcus Ellis and Lauren Smith announced to the fans here and there's a number of English flags waving, the flag of St George. And this will be just a second meeting between these two pairs, and the only previous encounter was won by the Japanese pair of Yamashita and Shinoya. And that was in the second round of the World Championships in Huelva in Spain in December 2021. So I'm not sure if you managed to catch who won the toss there and who chose ends or what was chosen, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Kyohei Yamashita is 24 years of age from Okuyama in southwest Honshu, the main island of Honshu. Currently ranked 18 in the world, they went up one place on the world ranking earlier today. Uh, but as you could see, they have been as high as 13. Naru Shinoya uh, will turn uh, 29 on Saturday in four days' time. And she's from Aichi in the Chibu region, where Nagoya is the capital. Marcus Ellis, how wonderful to see him back on court after a seven months absence after hip surgery after the Commonwealth Games here in Birmingham last year. He's 33 years of age, born in Huddersfield, and their world ranking went down 11 places because they've only got five tournaments towards their world ranking. Uh, but they have been as high as seven. Lauren Smith is 31, and these two English players are partners both on court and off. They have a pet spaniel called Luna, don't they, Chris? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. who Lauren is very obsessed with. Well, I'm not surprised. He or she? She, she is, to be fair, she is a very cute dog. She is a very cute dog. Yeah. I've seen some pictures on social media. Well, as far as Ellis and Smith are concerned, I was telling you the two-time semi-finalists back in 2020 and again the following year, and on both occasions they lost their semi-finals to the eventual champions. In 2020, they lost to Praveen Jordan and Malati Diva Octavianti, and in 2021 to lost to Yuto Watanabe and Orisa Higashino. Higashino and Watanabe are the defending champions. They've won three All England titles in the last five years. So our court officials are from Switzerland and Austria, ensuring neutrality. Well, of course, Yamashita and Shinoya really shot to stardom when they won the bronze medal at the World Championships in 2021, which is the tournament where in the second round they beat their opponents of today. Actually won their bronze medal at the World Championships when ranked 53 in the world. Had only ever played two Super 500 or above tournaments on the World Tour. That was absolutely extraordinary.
and gentlemen, on my right, Kyohei Yamashita and Naru Shinoya, Japan. And on my left, Marcus Ellis and Lauren Smith, England. Lauren Smith to serve to Kyohei Yamashita, Lawol, play. So it is Marcus Ellis and Lauren Smith, hey. the home pair, who gets this match underway. Yeah, and that's well played by Yamashita. Now, Sir, Chris, I know I that one love. you hey. had breakfast with Marcus and Lauren this morning, didn't you? Hey. Now, give us the inside scoop. How how fit is he? This is his first tournament since his hip surgery. Uh, how does he rate himself as far as uh, back to full fitness is concerned? I think fitness, to be honest, isn't hey. isn't an issue. To be honest, like. Marcus once did some testing with Team GB and he nearly One. broke the machines oh. in regards to his physical attributes and I'm I'm confident he'll be back there. I think the hardest thing is when you haven't played a tournament which you highlighted for seven months, it is so hard because the first tournament back it feels like you know you're almost starting all over again in regards to everything. You've got to deal with the emotions, the nerves, everything. And they got a bit of pressure on them because it's not too far away from Olympic qualifying starting. One. So this game, it's not a must win, but it's a good chance for them to see the level they're at. But the Japanese, I'll tell you what, in the last two years, they have improved an unbelievable Wait. amount. Yeah, they were semi-finalists last week in Germany. Japanese pair. Ah! Three, one. Quarter-finalists in India. Really good reverse there. Made it look like he was going to the middle and just reversed it at the last second. Marcus just left slightly too big a gap down the line. Oh my goodness me, there's broken strings there and that's why that went under the net. Look at that. Well, at least he hit it in the middle. That's the middle string that's gone. In fact, Lauren had broken strings as well. Look, both broken strings in that rally. Always matching, even with broken strings. But I think it's one of those, with the, t <laughs> with the TV lights, it can be so bright sometimes that the, the shuttle can just literally, for a you know, fraction of a second go in the light, you lose it for a split second. Next thing you know, you're, you're swiping. And I think that's what happened there. Cause I think where the string broke, you know, it was, a, it was an obvious mishit from Marcus. really on for a round the head shot there from Lauren Smith. I think the the big attribute of the, the Japanese is how consistent they are, how solid they are. You know, they don't really give you any cheap points, any easy points, and sometimes it just makes you think you have to do something that extra bit special. Um, you know, the best player I've ever played at that was Lee and Day. He was, you know, the amount of easy points he'd get because he would never make a mistake. I mean, it didn't matter even when he got tired. He was so disciplined and so consistent he would always end up with so many easy points from his opponents. This is a good rally. Oh, that's brilliant from Shinoya. Six, one. I do think with Shinoya, considering she's, she's 28, and two years ago she kind of started to shine, for a player that would be considered slightly later in their career to show how good she really is. I mean, she is very, very good. Attacking play is coming from the Japanese pair at the moment. Yeah, it's a good rally. I, I think I appreciate your point about Shinoya and Haru Shinoya. 
I don't think she really played mix before a couple of years ago, but she was a very good women's doubles player. I mean, she's been in 15 women's doubles finals, winning six titles with three different partners. So uh, while it wasn't at the necessarily the Super Series level and then the top of the World Tour levels, she was a very, very good women's doubles player, and she's converted now to just concentrating on the mix. Yeah, no, I agree. I remember seeing her play ladies' doubles. Um, but I would, I would say I think she's better suited, and she's showing that to mix because she's, I mean, she's very good. As you said last week, they lost 19 in the third in their semi-final, and they could have, they could have even ended up winning that and being in the final. But yeah, it, you just think it was a bit late for her. To, I mean, maybe it's being a bit harsh by me saying it, but it's maybe whoever decided she could have played mixed before and you know, she could have shone even earlier in her career but you know she's still young she's got a lot of years ahead of her and she is such a good player that was kind of kept under wraps in mixed mm. thing is at the moment the uh, Marcus and Lauren when they're defending it's a bit passive so they're just reacting they're getting it back but they're not doing anything with it and the Japanese are so consistent and hard-working you know eventually they're going to get through they've yeah. really got to try and find the gaps and outmaneuver the Japanese which isn't really happening at the moment no I, I think in general they're a little bit content to defend it's it's I, I totally agree with you they've been passive in their defensive play but I wouldn't want them so defending as much as this anyway. I think they're much better when they're on the attack. But it's this confidence thing, whether this man, Marcus Ellis, has got confidence after seven months out of the sport uh, to actually really go for those attacking shots. Because if you're doing that, you've got to move quickly for the next shot. You know, definitely. And sometimes it's easier to defend because it feels easier in regards to, as you say, you're not having to exert quite the same physical um, effort. So you can be being safer, but you're totally right. I would agree in regards to, I don't believe that they can win this match from defending because the Japanese are too solid and consistent. Very good call from Marcus Ellis to his partner to leave it. This is the other important thing we've seen, that the, the end the Japanese are currently down has the wind with them, so lifting is harder for the Japanese. But the thing is, at the moment, the English haven't really made the Japanese lift. So they haven't had to struggle, because, I mean, that is a long way out. You're talking yeah. nearly off the map. This is the thing, the Japanese are doing everything to not lift. Yeah. They're playing well, there's no doubt about it, Yamashita and Shinoya. Yeah, they'll definitely be confident after last week where they played incredibly well. because I don't think there's that many um, ladies at the moment that are doing a tumble serve. No, it didn't really tumble, did it? Mm. I'd like to see it, but it's, I mean, I'd like to see myself do it, but I couldn't, because um, it is a very, very difficult thing. I think there's a few players that are, especially in the men's doubles category, amazing at it at the moment. to these rallies, isn't it? But there's the lift. Right. And then they're in oh. trouble. English pair. Silver. Silver. Yeah, yeah, silver medalists in Birmingham last year. But it is a comfortable lead for Yamashita and Shinoya. Five point advantage here in the opening game at the mid game. Oh, yeah, Straight, okay. Don't cross. 
水，然后哦哦，有个九七满点，不过哦，喂，我走喂，还要走，啊九七一直往上，都上这边，那 OK， 这边那。Alright, doing alright. Okay, we had three points there. Well, we just didn't have we had the initiative in a rally. Well, right. Just missed. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Again, energy again now in the back. We've got to work. Got to fight hard for these points now. Yeah. Come on. Julian Robertson, the English coach. So the coaching over. Jeremy Gang. Malaysian player, ex doubles coach for the Japanese national team. And they've got three or four good pairs now, Japan. At the top of World Badminton in the mixed doubles discipline. I think it was the one doubles event that before Wantanabe, you know, they hadn't quite had pairs of the very, very best standard. And exactly as you say, all of a sudden, there was a pair last week I'd never seen before who beat uh, Tom and Delphine from France, and they put the Japanese played incredibly well. Yeah. Two pairs in the semi-final. And that didn't include Watanabe and Higashino. Well, this is a good comeback, you know. It is believable. No! Nine eleven, even better. Nine eleven. Great attack, getting the attack. Here's the key. Oh, they can't win by by being passive in defence. Worth a hey. challenge, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very close. Closer than I had thought initially. Flick serve to Shinoya, get her to the back, keep her at the back. And they've sw yeah. swapped positions. This is a good rally. Oh, oh. Unbelievable. Yeah. Superb. the best rally of the match so far no doubt in my mind big difference now when the English are defending they're actually being active and by that I mean they're moving the Japanese so that almost every time if you watch the Japanese are kind of just slightly off balance I mean say that lift was a bit short and you shouldn't miss that but a lot of the rest of the rally the Japanese were off balance which does make the difference best rally and the longest rally so far
would say the way Marx is moving, you know, he looks he looks fine. He looks considering you wouldn't think he's had seven months out the way he's moving around the court. No, not at all. Looking I am gonna be honest, I couldn't move like that when I was when I was fully, <laughs> fully fit. <laughs> I, of course, would, was pretty slightly when I was fully fit. <laughs> I have heard that you were a gazelle around the court. I was a gazelle. This is why we'd be a good combo, Jill. You, know? you can do all the hard work and I'll just kill it at the net. Well, she was right to go for it, in my opinion. Lauren Smith. Yeah, she was just unlucky. She just didn't have enough body movement going forward. She kind of almost committed and went down. She's got to keep going through the shuttle to make sure it goes over. But I'll definitely say the style the English are playing now is very different from the beginning of the match. Yeah, they're much more in it, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Got themselves back in with a run of six of seven of eight points played. just a bit too close when she's put pace into the shuttle she just has to give herself a fraction a little bit more space a bit more room and then i don't think she would have missed it her feet were kind of almost in front of the front service line so she should move back after hitting the shot move back very slightly half yeah. a little yeah, pace definitely. as soon as you put pace or some speed into the shuttle generally people are going to put pace back in so you have to give yourself the space if you're taking control and your opponent's below tape and you're playing soft then you can chase forward because they have to hit upwards Yeah, he's timing it very well. He's hitting it hard. times in this opening game they've been five points adrift It'll now be just one point adrift it's very good indeed from the English combination and can't hit anything loose to Yamashita I would say I think he's only made maybe one one mistake so far in this game he's been pretty faultless yeah, the English bear gone in each other's way now. Hey. Hey. trying to lift the shuttle hey. hey. oh, another string on still feel that she know it's just we're talking half a step too close because when she's cutting these out she can't generate any power because she's if you look at just just a fraction like we're talking half a step further back i know they won the point but i think if marcus is putting more speed in i just think he'd be able to catch her yeah no i agree with you i think the movement of the female player at the front of the court always adjusting their position and, and coming out slightly so as you're going to try and intercept your movement is going forward rather than what she was doing which was her movement was going back so you need to be back slightly to start so your movement goes forward I totally agree Chris oh, that's a careless error from Ellis yeah that was a bit of a cheap one there as you said before it's, these runs keep happening the English keep kind of I think you said four or five points the Japanese keep getting and it's almost happened again. Two 
minutes away from the opening game for the Japanese pair. That's nice. Oh, that's brilliant, isn't it? Game point opportunities. Five of them for Yamashita and Shinoya. I would definitely echo what you said there, Jill, in regards to the shot that Shinoya played. It was brilliant. She held it, almost lured Marcus in, pushed it through, and then the English are in trouble, and then she set them up. placement of the smash from Marcus Ellis absolutely set the next shot up for his partner and that's what you want to do in mixed doubles that's what you want to do in any doubles get your partner involved at the front of the court because it's from the front of the court that you're more likely to win make winners very unlikely from the back of the court so one game point well saved but they convert on their second game point opportunity. Yamashita and Shinoya, one game to the good against the English pair of Ellis and Smith. Umpire confirming that scoreline, 21-16 in 20 minutes. flat and we push we need to be ready but we turn it out of the way of straight line we just turn it away we need to look where he is yeah yeah do not give him too much play let's yeah. find a, a really challenge around there and see what we've got yeah, yeah? A great response out of the break there yeah. yeah really good response so we'll go again yeah we'll go again and we show them what we can do and keep the energy up now yeah do not rush in between points even yeah if we're not if, we, if they get a run just take your time get organized and get ready again yeah yeah, it is really good. Yeah, right. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on, let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. What a terrific opening game by Yamashita and Shinoya Second of Japan. Game. Right from the onset, they were looking to be aggressive. But it was very interesting, Julian Robertson, the English coach, saying to the English combination of Marcus Ellis and Lauren Smith, great energy coming out of the mid-game interval in that opening game. And asking them to try and replicate that here in the start of the second game. a lucky net cord from Yamashita. I have to say I was giving Shinoya a lot of praise before the game, but Yamashita, he has been, I mean, he's been very good so far. He's literally not put a foot wrong. That's a good 
conflict serve. That was something else Julian Robertson was talking about in the two-minute timeout in between games. More use of the flick serve. first how well the flick was working to Shinoya she's not hurting them when they flick and it's just getting her off the net so I think it's a it's a good tactic to keep doing it until anyway until Shinoya realizes and maybe is a little more ready for it or takes a small step back or something short sharp motion of the racket head didn't need a big swing down so steeply. Wait, wait. Great start to this game for Marcus and Lauren. smash the first smash quite flat but very wide which made it so difficult for Marcus to get onto it and if he could have he wouldn't have been able to turn it yeah the apology after the rally from hey! Shinoya look as she hit Lauren Smith with the shuttle hey! yeah there's the apology in fact for both of the Japanese players no. yeah, definitely the uh, most polite, respectful nation, I think, in, maybe in the world, but definitely in the badminton world. I have a suspicion, Chris, that the defensive stance of the two English players, I think they're going too deep in their defensive stance, and I think they're becoming vulnerable to the drop shots. They've got to try and stay their ground, stand their ground a little bit more. Yeah, I agree. I think the, the Japanese are going to be varying their attack more because, in theory, they're attacking against the wind, so they're trying to get the English to lift. Lauren's just taking that one too low. Even if it goes over, it's just too low to be playing soft. I think Shinoya would have been on it. one and not such a good return there she's played an upward return and it's Wait. exactly where Lauren wants it but great cut out from Lauren he takes this and still plays a wonderful backhand that's extraordinary yeah, that was it was very very impressive from him yeah yeah another flick yeah it's great use of the flick serve now by the english pair good variation from lauren the japanese at the moment are really struggling in the first three or four shots of the rally
but almost every time there the Japanese are attacking they're not in a fantastic position like almost every time the, the defense from Marcus and Lauren is so much better because now they're making the Japanese move they're making them feel uncomfortable and you know in the first game I think I saw one mistake from uh, Yamashita and in this one I think we've already had four or five it's a it's a big change Long. Got to think about the drift. Six, nine. Hey! Come here. did awful well with that Seven, uh, shooter. Nine. Sometimes they're the hardest ones. Lauren's probably focusing more on him than actually playing the shot. And you just lose concentration or lose sight of the shuttle for a second and you miss, miss the slightly easier one. No, oh, that's landed well in. Good flick serve from Yamashita. Eight, nine. Have to say, great response from the Japanese here when it looked like the English were just starting to pull away. Yeah. I agree. It is a good response. It's going long. Yeah, you can really see the drift with that shot. He hardly seemed to touch that. He went way long at the back line. So back level, Japanese pair. It's so hard to go flat over someone from the end that the English are because the only way you can go over someone is if you put height on it to slow the shuttle down. And it's just a bit too flat, they just keep going. The shuttle won't slow down, it won't stop. Another one gone way, way long. Well, that was very nearly on the blue carpet. Then no wonder he smiles. I think it's a good indication for us, you know, obviously just how how strong the drift is. Maybe it's a lot more than it has been in previous years because almost everyone today has struggled lifting from the other side. So it does show the drift is, you know, is quite substantial. Yeah, it's significant. But I remember that being the case last year. And I think it's it. Yeah, there's a third one. Three on the trot, hit long of the back line from Lauren Smith or Marcus Ellis. And 11-9 on a run of six straight points, Yamashita and Shinoya have the advantage now in the second game, having already won the first. If you're going with it now, we've got to get the feet working really, really fast and get it in front of them. Yeah, get it in front of them. Doing all right. All right, stay with it now, all right? It's really important. Keep your variety in that first part. Just four shots, but also serve the turns. the traditional bow of the Japanese players before they enter the court. Interesting that Julian Robertson was saying keep the variety on the first part of the rally. So variety, I assume, on serve, variety on return of serve. Yeah, I think it's an area that they were, they were getting a lot of success, especially when Lauren was serving at one point. But I think it was interesting, the tactics from... Japanese, it was more about oh, that's good. Yeah, that's very good. More about if you're not sure, stop it off because something that you well, highlighted at the end of the nine. before the break is there were three lifts out. If you're stopping the shuttle off and the English have to lift, it's something they're struggling with more than if you put pace into the shuttle, it's actually easier to just control the pace than actually have to lift when you're below tape. And I think that's I would have given the same tactic to the to the Japanese as well. 
Well, it is seven straight points now to Yamashita and Shinoya. That's a big run. It's a big run that Marcus is, and Lauren, they need to stop. Yamashita finding the gap deep in the backhand corner of Marcus Ellis. That's great awareness. But somehow they have got to stop this run, the English pair. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if that was, if it was intentional, as you say, it was incredible vision. I don't know if he slightly mishit it. I mean, I'm sure he's going to claim it was it was intentional because it was a moment of brilliance, but it could have been a slight mishit, but it worked out very well for the, for the Japanese. points but that run could be decisive I suppose in this second game I would say yeah, it's big because as you said it's a big run and now the Japanese just have to keep in their mind point for point and it, they don't have to chase whereas Marcus and Lauren they do have to chase because they are you know, three points behind yeah. brilliant serve there by Marcus I do yeah. think um, Shinoi was maybe expecting the flick because there had been so many and then a return's going upwards and instantly they're in trouble. Oh. Yes. Hey. Well, so much from my theory that that run of eight points was decisive. Hey. Hey. This is very good by the English pair. Hey. It's good variation on the serve from Marcus and I do feel in the first four shots, the Japanese maybe aren't quite as good as the English. And again, it's, it's good variation. I feel in that situation, I don't know if Lauren had to quite... She's almost forcing pressing. Look, look, she's almost just a bit too high. If she was half a step back, even a step further back, she's still got it. And I don't think she'd miss that. Because the Japanese are in a lot of trouble there. What a rally. This is important now. Brilliant. Fabulous! What a rally! Yeah, it was good there for Marks at the end. He was composed. All he did was put pressure on. He just pushed it and waited for his easy chance and then he killed it. That's the wrong shot for me. When he went cross in the defence, um, he opened them up. If he'd have kept it straight, he would have kept Marcus in a straight line against himself. But he opened himself. He opened the partnership up for Marcus to be able to then put them in trouble. I wouldn't be surprised if that was the longest rally. Indeed, it is. 70 shots. Previous longest, I think, was 42.
Oh, that's good. He's never afraid to stand his ground at the front of the court, Yamashita. Yeah, that was, that was just very good all round from him because he was in a bit of trouble with the return. Obviously, he didn't return, but the return went upwards and put him in trouble, and then he got them out of trouble and then won the point. He, he played a very good rally there, and it could be a quite an important point of this match. Ellis and Smith want to please the home fans here. I think they need to close down this deficit right now. Oh. Drive serve, got so, no so advantage so at all. 70, it's just, 40. it's a difficult one because could it have worked if it was struck slightly cleaner? Quite possibly, but yeah, it worked out to not be a, of, of the advantage, whereas it could easily have been a, a turning point, let's say, with something. And this is where it's such a fine line between brilliance or the wrong shot or the wrong choice. Great pressure from Marcus there. Take it early, says Julian Robertson. Oh, that's be very, very good from Shanoia. Yeah, that, that was yeah, the, the perfect shot because Marcus had committed and he was ready for anything flat or soft, but going over, I mean, it's the perfect shot and he, I don't think anyone could get that. Ellis. Oh, return of serve, and that made all the difference. Yeah, it's a brilliant return of serve. I would say the serve, it was a good serve, but I just feel now the English are feeling a bit more comfortable in return and serve. I do feel the Jap Japanese need to just have a little bit more variation on their serves. well on that one Yamashita and the quality of the shot as well was incredible and that one one point in it 17 18 and this shows you if you keep believing for Marcus and Lauren there was there were times when they were down you know quite heavily down and they kept believing and they managed to turn it around and you know near enough even Stevens now oh. so that's a kiss of death there Two-point advantage and two points away to Yamashita and Shinoya from booking their place in the second round. Now, what serve are we going to see here? And it is match point opportunities, three of them for Yamashita and Shinoya. He's going back to uh, what the Japanese coach advised them, which is, you know, get the English below tapes that are having to lift because it is difficult and it's even more stressful right at the end of a match. And that's when, unfortunately, some players will make that e easier mistake on the lift.
and they convert on their first opportunity. 21-16, 21-17 to Yamashita and Shinoya. Breaking the hearts of the English fans in the process. Marcus Ellis and Lauren Smith, the Commonwealth Games silver medalists, who had been two-time semi-finalists at the Onyx All England Championships Sorry. in the past. Well, it's obviously a disappointing result for home fans, uh, but I think it's jolly encouraging to see Marcus Ellis uh, moving as well as he was moving in that match. 44 minutes in total for the victory for the Japanese pair. That concludes today's action here so, in Birmingham. We trust you've enjoyed your day. 21 16, 21 17. At the Yonex Falling Over Birmingham Championship 2020. Yamashita and Shinoya through to the second round. So that concludes our first day of coverage here at the All England Championships, which all started over 10 hours ago with the defending champions Fikri and Mulana coming through in three games against the two-time world championship bronze medalist Kim Ji Jung and Kim Sa Rang. And then it was English interest in the women's doubles and Birch and Smith, the Commonwealth Games silver medalist, too good for the young American pair. Then we had men's singles and the Olympic bronze medalist Anthony Sinisuka Ginting, the number three seed, uh, beating the world championship bronze medalist from 2019, Wang Chalon. That also two straight games. Then it was women's singles and it it was a repeat of the 2021 women's singles final, but it was a, re a reverse result with uh, Pompawi Chochuwong uh, beating Nozomi Okuhara in today's first round encounter. Then it was men's doubles, and what an excellent match that was with Onyu Sin and Tiu Yi coming from a game down against the Olympic champions, beating the Olympic champions 21-18 in the deciding game. Then it was men's singles once again, and it was the battle of the former finalists uh, because the beaten finalists from 2020, Chou Tian Chen of Chinese Taipei, the number five seed, was beaten by last year's beaten finalist, Laksha Sen. That was in two straight. Then we had an excellent women's singles with Gregoria Mariska Tunjung of Indonesia beating uh, Lina Kiersfeld of Denmark. Had to save two match points in that deciding game coming from 18-20 down before eventually winning it 22-20. It was another three-game match in the men's doubles with the battle of the former European champions Astrup and Rasmussen against the reigning European champions Lamsford and Seidel. It was the former champions and the number seven seeds Astrup and Rasmussen that came through in three games having come from a game down. Then there was more Danish interest and once again a Dane having to come from a game down. Victor Axelsson, the reigning world and Olympic champion and defending champion here at the All England Championships, really had to work hard against a very inform Li Chak Yu from Hong Kong, China. And as we've just witnessed in the mixed doubles, Yamashita and Shinoya uh, beating the Commonwealth Games silver medalists, with Marcus Ellis making his first return to international competition for seven months. But disappointment for the English fans as they went down in two straight games. So more first round action tomorrow, same time as today. That's 10 a.m. local time, which is also a 10 hundred GMT. So in the meantime, until tomorrow, from all of us here and especially from Chris Langridge and myself, Jill Clark, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.